Today marks the premiere of Has Been Hotel on Amazon Prime, with them launching four episodes to start because the first two episodes already aired on the A24 app one week ago. Today, we're going to talk about the theory that Angel has already been foreshadowed to be a character who dies by the end of Haspen Hotel, and with it, we're going to discuss the controversy of Episode 4, which had already had a lot of debate online due to it featuring graphic content about the horrors of Angel Dust's life as an adult entertainer in hell. For most fans of the show, this is not surprising, as it was essentially the premise that was promised in the pilot, that the series would be a deconstruction of this exact type of person living with a princess who is trying to get him to give up his sins. That being said, due to how controversial this episode already is, if you don't want to hear more about this topic, please turn back now. For those who want to hear my thoughts about the rest of the season so far, I have linked a playlist down in the comments with all of my videos about the first two episodes, and if you love indie animation, I put out a breakdown for the crazy cool mythology behind the series Broken Beat. Consider checking it out even if you haven't seen Broken Beat yourself, as it's more of an introduction to the series that breaks down its lore. Now, as discussed, the premise of Has Been Hotel is that the Princess of Hell is trying to redeem sinners, with her primary focus being the sole patron at her hotel, Angel Dust. Since the pilot, Serpentius has also become a guest at the hotel alongside Angel, but it still remained obvious that exploring the dark nature of Angel Dust's life was always going to be a huge part of the show. Even before Has Been Hotel aired, there was the Addict music video, which in many ways is a prequel to the Poison music sequence in Episode 4 of the Amazon season. This music video really captures the arc and essence of Angel Dust in the show. While it starts a bit ominous with some sad moments about regrets, most of the music video is Angel Dust partying and celebrating his addiction. The irony of the music video had always been that it was about how people get addicted to things that make them celebrate their addictions. That addiction is horrifying, but in the midst of that horror, you have someone experiencing extreme pleasure from it as well. Despite this celebration, we see even more dark moments in the middle of the music video, including Valentino forcing a kiss on Angel, who we later see throwing a fit, indicating that Valentino routinely did much more than just force a kiss onto Angel. The final sequence before the credits involves a return to the more uplifting part of the song, where we see a vision of Angel and his friend Cherry Bomb, who has not appeared in the Amazon series yet. In this vision, they blow up one of Valentino's clubs, but I call this scene a vision of sorts, because on the wall in the club, we can see a sign saying, it's all a dream. This sequence, and really the entire music video before the post credit scene, appears to be Angel experiencing the highs and lows of his addiction to the Angel Dust, with him using it to disassociate and lean into his job, to make him enjoy something he essentially doesn't want to do, and then in that time, experiencing the flashes of regret and moments where he can't really escape, particularly when he's being kissed by Valentino. This last part, where they destroy the club then, is thus a fantasy near the end of his high about him escaping his situation, of escaping Valentino, and in a way, escaping his addictions. But the post credit scene paints a very different picture. In this portion, Angel sings about the day after his high, the low he feels, and how, like in the moment shown on screen, he's already on his way back up again with another high. Here, Charlie tries to get him to put down his vice, but he doesn't end up doing so until he is alone in his room and has another vision of Valentino using him, and Angel very clearly fearing that. This set up the larger exploration of the series, particularly honing in on how Charlie might affect Angel, and while the Addict music video showed her as perhaps having a minor but positive influence that leads to Angel putting down his vice, the show went in a wildly different direction with this, at least at first. For the first three episodes, Angel is shown to be one of the top stars in all of Hell, where adult film stars are something of an extreme celebrity. All of this is thanks to Valentino, who died on Earth during the peak of the early adult film industry, where he was able to take this knowledge into Hell. With the help of Velvet and Vox, they were able to take adult films to tiny pocket-sized screens for everyone in Hell, making him particularly powerful. Angel makes Valentino the most money because of his unique manifestation as a sinner, which others seem to find very attractive, but their relationship is more complex than just that. Valentino has a very sexual interest in Angel as well, and outside of that seems to have an extreme hatred for him as a person. Angel generally seems to hate having to sleep with Valentino in particular, or even just interacting with him, and thus staying at the hotel is not him trying to redeem his soul, but rather it's about Angel having a free place to 
Wednesday, so what money he makes can go to his addictions. In episode 4, Charlie doesn't want Angel to leave the trust exercises they are doing at the hotel she had planned to go work for Valentino, and she thinks she can convince Valentino to give Angel more time off if she goes there and talks to him herself. And out of playing respectful because Charlie is the princess of hell, Valentino doesn't directly attack Charlie. Instead, he pulls Valentino into a private room after Charlie has ruined their film shoot, and reveals that Angel's soul is actually owned by Valentino. In episode 3, we had learned that the overlords the series focus on own the large majority of the souls in Hell, with Husk revealing that he himself also traded his soul to Alistair in order to stay afloat, when he had gambled away too much of his own power. Now, in Hell of a Boss, souls are presented as a currency system, one that is, I believe, weighted by souls the bank has in its possession. But when talking about Hasbin Hotel, we'll be leaning into what their lore points to for souls, more so than what Hell of a Boss may say, as the two may contradict. Angel and Husk, in particular, appear to have sold their souls as part of deals directly to particular people, and thus, they are at the direct mercy of that overlord instead of them simply receiving the power of the person's soul that they now own. This means that Husk is not really at the hotel by any real choice of his own, with the alcohol Alistair offered him in the pilot really just being a reminder that he has no choice in the matter, but that Alistair doesn't care if he's drunk for it. Angel can go stay somewhere else, but if Valentino demands something of him, Angel ultimately has to do it, and any attempt to escape him will have to go beyond simply finding somewhere else to live, like I had theorized in previous videos. In this episode, Angel admits to Husk that part of the reason he likes to go out and let strange demons roofie him is that it's another layer of his disassociation, another place to give in to his complex additions to both drugs and sex, which aren't just about the joyous highs, but also the intensity he can feel at the lows, becoming addicted to just how much he hates his situation as well. In the end, Husk teaches him to embrace the darkness he's experienced, to try and live in his situation more realistically. Angel has a lot of complex issues, but his inability to connect with the people immediately around him is that he's trying to present himself as being someone who is thriving because of his situation, someone who is famous and sought after, and that everyone should want to have a piece of. When he is able to talk about just how hard it is instead of insisting it's all been wonderful, Angel is able to drop an aspect of his persona that allows him and Hus to have a real conversation, which in turn leads to Angel forgiving Charlie. This, of course, is not the conclusion to the story of Angel, however, and future episodes will undoubtedly return to this dynamic with Valentino as the nature of soul deals is explored, and the way this episode ended is not what is so controversial about it either. Before the new season even aired, some of the music was put out to promote the show, with one song, Poison, sung by Angel Dust, being important here. Poison is similar to Addict, with them both having places where they are very much a party song and celebrating the poison that Angel is addicted to, with other parts being very dark, talking about how the story will end with Angel dead from the poison, but more on that later. The sequence in episode 4 that plays with this song is visually similar to Addict as well, with really intense highs and disturbing lows, where Angel is in situations that he's clearly not happy with, that he does not want to do. I don't want to show this footage, but if you've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about, with it being a more intense version, in my opinion, of the scenes from the Addict music video. Now, when approaching this scene, and really any scene, I think it is important to examine the layers of it to see the full picture. The music video, if you will, of course deals with the issue of consent, but it's a lot more complex than simply whether or not Angel said yes or no in a particular situation. And when I say it's more complex than that, I don't mean in the moral sense. Valentino is obviously evil, and the complexity of the situation doesn't make him less evil, nor does it make Angel less of Valentino's victim. The complexity instead reflects the complexity of real life, which which is that consent is rarely ever an issue of someone just saying yes or no, and that Angel is so far beyond that point and yet really needs help. The complexity is symbolized in the show through the contract that Angel has. In real life, we don't truly sell our souls to each other in this way, but it represents how in real life people end up in more and more dire situations where they have to rely on people who already have resources that they need. Valentino at first had offered Angel an escape from his family in Hell, with his brother and father said to be big in the drug gang in Hell. After dying on Earth, Angel would end up in Hell, but end up succumbing deeper to his vices and joining the adult film industry to support that vice. In the music sequence, Angel goes back and forth from seemingly enjoying the situations to clearly hating it, but ultimately not having a choice as a demon owned by an overlord in Hell. 
when Angel is portrayed as enjoying it as well, it is shown almost exclusively as being part of an act. Or more directly, being him simply getting high so that he is able to lean into the role. He very literally sings about how to get through it, he has to disassociate. With Angel's vice, this poison that allows him to disassociate, being what allows him to perform the way that Valentina wants. The performance of Angel Dust in all of this is very sexual, of course, but sexual does not mean positive or good, and I think that is a common misconception people have. This is media that, in its very premise, is set up to explore very dark territory about characters who sexualize their own trauma, and part of that means showing it as overtly sexual to its audience. The Helliverse is known as a whole for portraying its characters, particularly with alternative sexualities, as being trapped in dynamics where our protagonists are often the victim. And and it clearly reflects the times we live in where people as a whole are being taken advantage of in similar ways across life, with it honing in on the premises more familiar to the creators as they work their way through fame-based industries like Angel Dust and Fizzarali, who despite being very sexual icons, are considered mainstream stars like we'd think of as movie actors here on Earth. These are real-life artists making these shows who have either witnessed or experienced themselves systems where these sort of toxic Valentinos are able to thrive. Hell of Boss has found its heart with Fizzarali and Mammon, who are in a similar dynamic to Valentino and Angel, though with much less of Mammon having a direct interest in Fizz. For now, Fizzarali has managed to escape Mammon and had a celebratory song about how he has made it to the top despite the way he's been used and abused, and can leave all of that behind while still celebrating who he is. Angel, likewise, is a symbol, and when the creators lean into the sexual aspect, even in Angel's darker moments, the audience should be be empathetic enough to understand that these are people who are putting this out to celebrate what people have survived and continued to thrive through, including people who were undoubtedly involved in production, not celebrating the darkness itself that was inflicted on Angel or people like him. That being said, Angel is a character who isn't nearly as prime for as much as a happy ending as Fizzarali appears to be. Mammon is, of course, going to go deeper with his plans to get revenge on Fizz, and there will be more turmoil for Fizz because of that, but I imagine Fizz and Osmodius as making it to the end with their happily ever after, and I can't really say the same for Angel. In Angel's song, Poison, it ends with him emphasizing the fear that he is going too far, that one day he is going to die from drinking too much of this poison. Now, as an immortal sinner, Angel can't truly die from the poison, but he can do enough damage to himself that I think it could lead to his death. He claims to want to damage himself in some way, not necessarily physically, but to ruin himself to such an extent that he isn't Valentino's moneymaker anymore, that Valentino doesn't find him appealing anymore, and instead, he just let Angel go. But that could have a much darker ending. We don't know exactly how these soul deals work, but if Valentino so chose, I imagine he has the power and authority to kill Angel's soul, being the owner of it and probably having easy access to angelic weapons. While this is generally seen as a loss to an overlord, if he wanted to kill Angel, it seems all he would have to do is order that Angel hold still as any angelic weapon is used against him, and there'd be no way to save him with Valentino having his soul under contract, and I don't imagine just running away could work considering Alistair could just teleport husk to him while owning his soul. In the end, it is Valentino's poison that Angel says is going to kill him, so I wouldn't be surprised if the story is slowly building towards Angel perhaps finding redemption in his personal life, getting away from his addictions, but this leading to Valentino getting his final revenge against Angel for trying to escape him. But what do you guys think? And with the touchy nature of this episode, please be empathetic even if you disagree about something, because at the end of the day, this is just media and this is just something we are discussing as a group. For those who still want more animation content to talk about, consider checking out our Has Been Hotel playlist for the first few episodes linked in the comment down below. And don't forget to take a look at our breakdown for why you should check out the indie animated series Broken Beat Fourthbringers. See you guys next time.